Singh Giovanni, and I will play your video uh, presentation on stage right now. Everybody, I'm Giovanni Palla. So, I'm here to present Squid Pie Spatial Single Cell Analysis in Python. This is joint work with Hannah Spitzer, Michel Klein, and Fabian Tice Lab in Munich. The single cell analysis ecosystem in Python has a rich set of tools for the analysis of single cell data. Most popular is SCAMPI, but many other tools have been developed during the years to tackle different aspects of single cell data analysis, such as SCVELO for RNA velocity with the modeling, CellRank for probabilistic fate mapping, SCVA tools for deep generative models for single cell data, and SIRPI for immune cell receptor sequencing data analysis. All these tools share a common API and they're modular and flexible and easily interchangeable in a single cell analysis workflow. Furthermore, they rely on the same data format, data representation called ANOD data or UNDATA. On the other hand, spatial molecular technologies such as spatial transcriptomics have become increasingly popular. And there was no Python tool for the analysis of such data. This is the motivation of SquidPy, a tool that is tightly integrated in the single cell analysis ecosystem in Python, but also leverages additional framework to store and analyze the large tissue image. Spatial molecular technology are technologies are very diverse in terms of the measurements acquired. Some of them are image based, some others are mass spectrometry based, and some others are sequencing based. And there are many tools that deal with the preprocessing aspect of such data. With SquidPy, we introduce two new data representations that le directly leverages the new modalities of spatial molecular technologies, namely the spatial graph, a nearest neighbor graph for spatial coordinates, and the image container, a new object that is able to store and analyze the large tissue image often acquired in spatial molecular experiments. Furthermore, we also provide many tools to extract patterns and uh, analysis from such new modalities such as special pattern, tools for special pattern extractions, image analysis, and interactive visualization. On the special graph side, we provide a flexible way to build the special graph, so the nearest neighbor graph from special coordinates. This is because of the differences between the technologies. Legacy special transatomics data, but also more modern techniques like Stereo 6 lie on a square regular grid, whereas transatomics vision lie on an hexagonal grid. On the other hand, other technologies like Mibitov, Murfish, and Sagfish would benefit from a more generic way of building a nearest neighbor graph in spatial coordinates. Once the spatial graph is built, SquidPy provides several tools to extract spatial patterns from the tissue. In terms of continuous features, they're often called spatially variable genes. We provide um, methods to identify the spatially variable genes. Here I'm showing examples of two genes to be found spatially variable in the coronal section of the mouse brain in a genomics visium experiment. And also we provide tools to identify spatial patterns in terms of discrete annotations, such as clusters. In this case, we're showing an analysis on SACFISH data, where neighborhood enrichment analysis identified co-curing enriched clusters as found also by the original authors or a co-occurrence course, which essentially computes the probability of co-occurring clusters as increasing distances, so a descriptive statistics that could therefore, that could nonetheless be informative to uh, identify spatial st uh, structure in the tissue. In this case, we find that the pyramidal layers co-occur with the hippocampus at shorter distances. On the image side, we introduce the image container, which is a new object that is able to store the large microscopy image acquired in spatial uh, experiments, relying on uh, efficient memory handling and out-of-core probabilities, because, uh, in leveraging task and X-ray. Furthermore, the image containers also provides methods to pre-process, segment, and extract features from such images. It is also can be also interfaced with the AMD data, where we store the molecular information. And furthermore, both of these objects can be interactively visualized uh, with Napari. We provide tutorials, for instance, to analyze Mibitov, where cell segmentation masks become observation of the dermatic data, and we can infer intensity of the channels and therefore the molecular features from the image. We also provide fit, um, examples on how to interface modern pre-trained deep learning tools for uh, cell segmentation or nuclei segmentation, both on HNE and fluorescent data. And finally, we show examples on how everything can be tied together with Napari. 
which provides a graphical user interface to visualize interactively the information stored in the analytic data together with a large tissue image and potential other results such as segmentation or other type of image analysis. With this, I would like to finish. Um, I'd invite you to check out the resources, specifically the documentation. We put a lot of effort in making tutorials and examples available for users. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank my co-authors and developers of the tools and you for your attention. Thank you. So yeah, thank you so much, uh, Giovanni. But I wanted to ask you a question that uh, for this, uh, so I did work on spatial single cell data uh, once. Uh, so, uh, so is this? Uh, uh, are you for molecular data? Do you mean that they are looking at gene expression data, or uh, what? Uh, what is it? Um, yeah, um, I think it's quite diverse in the type of measurements. So it could be gene expression in terms of RNA, it could also be proteins um, to be metabolized. Uh, um, and that has to do with the fact that when we say spatial, when the field says spatial omics data, they mean like a lot of different type of technologies. So for the sequencing base, of course, that's RNA-seq. Um, but um, uh, there are a lot of image-based uh, or mass spectrometry-based that, uh, for instance, image uh, antibodies, so proteins, uh, or for mass spectrometry, even metabolites. So it's, it's, it's quite diverse. But for our purpose, essentially, they're just molecular features, right? We just store them as, as features and do analysis with that. Uh, 